another take on NVIDIA's results. Angelo Zeno of CFRA Research joins us now. Angelo, want to get your initial thoughts. Uh, as we do see the stock trade higher, we did see them beat on the top and bottom lines and come in much stronger on some of those key metrics like data center. Obviously, we just talked about the gross margin and, and other metrics for the guide as well. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. So as far as the results are concerned, I mean, I, I think that it's as, probably as, as good as you want, wanted it to be. I mean, you, want, you didn't want the numbers to be too hot, uh, but you wanted them to be better than expected. And that's exactly what you kind of got this quarter. So um, we're perfectly happy with that. I mean, they, they did announce a number of other things like an increase in the dividend as well as, um, you know, the, the stock split and what have you. But as far as kind of the fundamentals are concerned, um, and, and the results for the, the April quarter and July quarter guide. Um, data center numbers continue to drive this business, and um, that continues to look promising. So um, all in all, I'd say, um, you know, we're pretty happy with the number. I'd say as far as gross margins are concerned, yes, they outperformed during the quarter, but when you kind of look at the guide uh, relatively in line to expectations, and when we kind of look at, you know, the, the back half of the calendar year here, we do expect it to kind of be, um, you know, more modest in nature, so call it, you know, mid-70s range. So um, as far as, again, that guide was concerned, relatively in line with expectations. NVIDIA just reported its 2024 quarter one results, smashing the expectations given by many Wall Street analysts and silencing the doubters. NVIDIA stock rose as much as 4% in extended trading after the earnings, but this wasn't everything, as NVIDIA had some surprising great news for investors, and we're going to cover them in today's video. We'll also walk you through some key points of NVIDIA's earnings report, some analysts' opinions, and talk about what these numbers mean for NVIDIA and investors. But first, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you do not want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. You've been pounding the table on it. You've been right, $1,000 a share, guiding a billion dollars over forecast. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find something to ask you where there might be a hole in the story, but I, I just don't know. The party's just getting started. I mean, I believe this is really this AI revolution that's playing out. And it's not just for the godfather of AI, Jensen, NVIDIA. You look across tech, we're going to be talking about three four trillion dollar types of valuations in tech. There is no slowing down. Brian, I think even the bulls, this is a drop to Mike quarter in terms of this. Now, look, you have bears out there, of course, like Ross Gerber and others on valuation. But I think this is just starting. Mm -hmm. It's a 1995 moment, not a 1990. I guess if I had to put the reality is Ross, like many others, went into this quarter driving 45 miles an hour in the right lane in their minivan. And they underestimated. It's a Rivian, it's a Rivian now, Dan. Dan. I, I got 10% of my money in NVIDIA. What are you talking about? But I'm they, driving a Cybertruck, not a minivan. But they underestimated. And I think as the godfather we heard spoke, the demand that we're seeing, it's just starting. Because this is really what I view as the first second inning of what's going to continue to play out, being led, of course, by Jensen, as well as Microsoft and what we see with Nadella. That's why, in my opinion, when you look at NVIDIA today, you get that popcorn ready. It's just starting in terms of this run. If I, I, I really hope you're right. I really hope you're right. I, I think there's a long runway for AI. I agree 100%. And that's why I like fundamentally don't disagree with what you're saying. It's just... You know, I actually manage the real dollars. You're an analyst. It's a little bit different because I have to explain to my clients, you know, why they have 20% of their portfolio in one stock. And so we have to be prudent investors and NVIDIA trading at 30, 40 times forward earnings is this historical multiple. Now, maybe it deserves 50 times forward earnings. I don't know. The market will determine that. But we're very bullish on NVIDIA and we're very happy with its performance. And we're not selling any more than keeping our allocation at around 9 to 10%, which is I, where we're I get the Ahead of the earnings report, Gerber Kawasaki expressed skepticism about NVIDIA stock's potential for growth. But Wedbush Securities' Dan Ives said that he disagrees, stating that this is just the start of the AI revolution. And as we saw, Ives was right. The stock crossed $1,000, and NVIDIA saw massive growth on multiple fronts. The company reported adjusted EPS of $6.12 on revenue of $26 billion, 
a jump of 461% and 262%, respectively, from a year ago. Meanwhile, analysts were expecting adjusted EPS of $5.65 on revenue of $24.69 billion, according to data from Bloomberg. Guidance for quarter two was also great, with NVIDIA saying that it expects revenue of $28 billion, plus or minus 2%. That's better than the $26.6 billion analysts had expected. Wall Street analysts have previously raised concerns about the share of NVIDIA's data center revenue that comes from companies like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and other big tech names. That's especially true as those companies roll out their own AI accelerator chips. Still, while non-hyperscale use of NVIDIA chips is growing, CFO Colette Kress said that large cloud providers accounted for around 45% of the company's data center revenue. NVIDIA's data center revenue jumped 427% year-over-year to $22.6 billion, accounting for 86% of the company's total revenue for the quarter. But Cress pointed out that revenue out of China was down significantly in the quarter since the company was forced to halt shipments of its most powerful chips to the country. What's more, she said she expects the market in the region to remain very competitive going forward. Now, let's get into some other announcements NVIDIA made and talk about why they're great news for investors. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. Yeah, I mean, look, I think I'm just looking at this now, not for the first time I've been pouring over this, but I just want to uh, quickly, very, very quickly point out that uh, obviously the data center business, easily the most important, but I just want to go over the gaming business real right. quick because now they're referring to it as gaming and AI PC. And if you've been right. following what's going on with uh, Microsoft, Qualcomm, Intel, AMD, they're all talking about this new generation of PCs, AI PCs, Microsoft, I was just in Washington, had a big event for this. Now NVIDIA pointing to AI PCs, they want to get in on that action as well. Uh, big partner with Microsoft, but, but the gaming business not the most important, it's clearly a data center. And I just want to point out the, the revenue share uh, for the company. 86% of the company's total revenue for the quarter came from data center revenue. This is a company that was all about gaming cards just a few years ago. Yeah, remarkable. Yeah. You go back to 2021, it, less than half of that was the share of the total revenue mm -hmm. pie, mm -hmm. as we talked about uh, earlier. So it's pretty incredible. You, you mentioned the gaming there, and I was interested to look at the sequential change mm -hmm. in the various segments mm -hmm. here. Data center obviously up huge year over year, more than 400%. Quarter over quarter up 23%, yeah. still quite respectable. Networking revenue was down 5%. Gaming revenue up year over year, down quarter over quarter on, uh, by 8%. And they blame that on seasonally lower GPU sales for laptops. Mm. Professional visualization, that's another part of the business, down 8% quarter over quarter. Auto Another bright spot, though, up 17% quarter over quarter. So that one, just, it's interesting to look as we see this big growth. And what does it look like quarter over quarter? What kind of momentum is there behind some of these businesses? NVIDIA also announced that its board of directors had approved a 10 for 1 forward stock split. This split will be effective on June 7th. And on June 28th, NVIDIA's new dividend, which is a 150% increase from the old one, will be paid out to investors. In a previous video, we talked about how a split would naturally be NVIDIA's next move as the company needed to make its stock more accessible to a new group of investors, and analysts expect the stock to trade at $98 after the split, so that will definitely encourage new investors to get in and boost NVIDIA stock. NVIDIA's beefed-up dividend also follows similar moves announced so far this year from other Magnificent Seven companies like Meta and Alphabet which both initiated quarterly dividends for the first time, and Apple, which raised its dividend earlier this month. This shows how all of these big tech companies are moving into a different phase of growth and maturity and might make them more attractive to another new group of investors, which is dividend investors. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. Um, you said on the call a, a couple of times that you'll be supply constrained for both Hopper and then Blackwell uh, chips well until next year because of the vast demand that's out there. Um, what can you do about that? Are there any sort of levers you can pull to help increase supply? Hopper demand 
grew throughout this quarter after we announced Blackwell. And so that kind of tells you how much demand there is out there. People want to deploy these data centers right now. They want to put our GPUs to work right now and start making money and start saving money. And so so that, that demand is just so strong. Um, you know, it, it's really important to take a step back and realize that what we build is not a GPU chip. We call it Blackwell and we call it GPU, but we're really building AI factories. These AI factories have CPUs and GPUs and really complicated memory. The systems are really complicated. It's connected by NVLink. There's an NVLink switch. There's InfiniBand switches, InfiniBand NICs, and then now we have Ethernet switches and Ethernet NICs, and all of this connected together with this incredibly complicated spine called NVLink. And then the amount of software that it takes to build all this and run all this is incredible. And so these AI factories are essentially what we build. We build it as a as a holistic unit, as a holistic architecture and platform, but then we disaggregate it so that our partners could take it and put it into data centers of any kind. And every single cloud has slightly different architectures and different stacks and our, our stacks and our architecture can now deeply integrate into theirs, but everybody's a little different. So we build it as an AI factory. We then disaggregate it so that everybody can have AI factories. This is just an incredible thing, and we do this at very hard, very high volume. It's just very, very hard to do. And so every every component, every every part of our data center uh, is the most complex computer the world's ever made, and so it's sensible that almost everything is constrained. Many investors are now wondering whether to buy NVIDIA stock now or wait until the split happens. While the stock split alone isn't reason enough to buy NVIDIA, there are plenty of reasons this company is a buy. In fact, investors need to look no further than the company's financial report, see the incredible growth, and make the decision. It's still very early in the AI revolution, which is even more reason to be bullish. The worldwide AI market clocked in at $2.4 trillion in 2023 and is expected to rise to $30.1 trillion, that is a compound annual growth rate of 32%, by 2032, according to expert market research. As the gold standard for GPUs used in AI, NVIDIA is well positioned for future success. NVIDIA's long track record of consistently strong operating and financial results and blistering stock price gains show why it continues to be such a winning investment. Some might balk at NVIDIA's valuation, like Gerber Kawasaki, but you get what you pay for. Despite four consecutive quarters of triple-digit revenue and EPS growth, NVIDIA stock is selling for 37 times forward earnings. That's a small price to pay for such incredible growth, and that's why NVIDIA stock is a buy in our opinion. But what do you think about NVIDIA stock? Will you be buying some shares now? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and don't forget to tell us what your valuation for NVIDIA is. If you would like to know more about the latest updates about companies like NVIDIA, then go ahead and click on the next video on your screen.